Hey, it's Denise. Welcome back. Um, yeah, still fighting the <coughs> still fighting the asthma flare. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how good Percy's doing. She has had some health problems, as I believe I've mentioned, digestive issues. Uh, forgive me, I'm, I've been on steroids for weeks now, and I'm like fluid retention, like a water balloon. Uh, but I just wanted to show you, for, <coughs> for me, the best medicine in the world is that little dog, who right now is... I'm going to turn the camera so you can see that little dog a little better. I'm going to be able to call her a little dog. Puppy, yes. You come here, mommy. Um. Again, like I know, I look like uh. What's his name? I was gonna say Attila the Hun. That's I don't mean Attila the Hun. Jabba the Hut for Star Wars uh, fans. But yeah, just my bed is covered in dog toys and dog chews, and most importantly, the dog. Uh. Right now, I can't even breathe when I walk regular. That didn't even sound like someone who speaks English. Um, so I'm not able to do any kind of like rough playing, or I'm not even walking or at this point. My son's doing all her walking. And it's weird. I'm, I'm looking at myself instead of looking at the camera because I'm like, dear God, look at that face. You're like so swollen. As you can see by the wavy tail attached to the puppy butt, um... Yeah, I just have her toys, a uh, layout, you know, a spread of her toys and a couple things to chew on. And I get puppy cut. I'm, I'm, I'm petting the tail. We're, we're heading towards the tail instead of the head end. Um, but, yeah, these, these puppy cuddles are the best medicine. And she's learning. And, you know, that's, that's something, like, I wanted to share as part of, you know, Percy's journey. We're dealing with the IBD, the digestive issues. She saw the vet yesterday for a checkup. Um, one good thing I can say, because a lot of dogs who go through IBD, um, which is inflammatory bowel disorder, if you're not familiar, means your dog has either lots of allergies or, in, or sensitivities. Um, you can do lots of research on it online. I'm not an expert. This is the first dog I've ever had that's had it. Uh, but essentially she can't, we have not been able to find a single dog food, not even the prescription stuff, um, that she can eat because we don't know what the magic ingredient or many ingredients are that she reacts to. And then she gets terrible diarrhea and, you know, you put her on medicine and it look, might look like it's getting better for a couple days, but then she's not even finished the medicine and the diarrhea is back because we were trying to switch her back, you know, gradually to some type of dog food. Then we tried lamb and rice, which I was cooking at home, and she wasn't getting better. And I suggested to the vet, because at first he was like, well, let's stick with that for a couple of days, you know, because you're going to be coming back in a few days. And I was like, about to say yes. And then I was like, Denise, you were a nurse for a very long time before your neck got hurt. Um, if someone said to you, one of your patients is getting sicker before your eyes, but let's keep doing the same thing for two more days, you would you would advocate. You would say no. You would say, no, I'm not going to stand here and say let's keep doing the same thing while I watch the person get sicker. So, um, <laughs> God, I love this dog. I wish you knew what, how much I love this dog. She's wonderful. She's got the best personality. Um... So I said to the vet, you know, let's let's have a talk, and that's when we decided we switched over to, to beef and uh, Greek yogurt. Not like the diet stuff that you buy if you're eating, like, you know, diet Greek yogurt, but I buy her the Cabot brand. It's like real Greek yogurt. It's 10% milk fat. It's very low lactose. You know, there's no artificial sweeteners. There's no, it's just like pure old-fashioned Greek yogurt like Greek yogurt is supposed to be. It's like decadently thick and delicious, um, but there's uh, most of the lactose is removed during the process of making real Greek yogurt. Uh, we're so used to, you know, as, as Americans, we look for like, oh, fat-free this, sugar-free that, 80 calories or less or else I'm not eating it. You know, when we buy yogurt sometimes, 
And we forget that yogurt itself in its true form is not a low calorie, low fat food. It's, um, and you know, like I said, the Greek yogurt in particular is low lactose. So, so what we worked out and what she's been doing good on for like two weeks now, she's eating about, <coughs> we just, as of yesterday's visit, decided we're going to up it. She's been eating about two pounds of food a day, a pound of, uh, cooked ground beef. It, it's split out over three meals and then a late evening snacks that she doesn't have an empty tummy for too many hours overnight. Um, about a pound a day of cooked ground beef. Uh, at each meal she gets about like a, about a quarter to a third of a cup of the Greek yogurt. And then her late night snack is like a larger serving of the Greek yogurt. And each meal also includes a combination of some applesauce and some pumpkin puree. And these are all like no additives, no sugar, no salt, no, no nothing. Because like I said, we don't know. There are some dogs that have this condition and it's one ingredient and you have to figure out what it is and then you can just find a dog food without that ingredient. And then there are other dogs who have it and it's many things trigger the inflammation of, of their bowel. And when that's the case, the likelihood of you finding something that doesn't contain any of those ingredients starts to become almost impossible. And that's when a home-cooked diet is the best way to go, at least in the beginning. And then the vet said just, you know, if you add a new ingredient to try, give it a full two weeks because it's not like an inflammatory response automatically happens overnight in a lot of cases. It, it could take, oh, such a good girl. Oh, such a good girl. She's trying to see, you know, she almost got me a third time. Can we train the stupid human that if I drop it over the edge, she'll get up and go get it, right? How many times can we get the human to get the thing? It's like how cats knock things off the table. Come here, silly thing. Come here. Come here, you silly thing. Um, but, yeah, so it seems like in her case, because not even the prescription foods that are diet, you know, that are for dogs with sensitive stomachs, so to speak, um, that wasn't cutting it, which makes it more likely that she probably has multiple sensitivities. And, you know, if you're not familiar with the immunological difference between an allergy and a sensitivity, I'm not going to go into all that because, you know, you can look that up if, if you're interested. But uh, basically, you know, one is a true allergic, you know, immune mediated response and the other is more of an inability to digest something. But the end result is a dog with diarrhea all the time. Um, and nobody wants that. <laughs> you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want that. And certainly you don't want it for your animal. I have been fortunate. Uh, some dogs who go through this are much sicker. At no point has she acted like she's in pain. At no visit has she failed to gain some weight between visits. So absolutely at no point did she lose weight, which is vital because she's five months old. She's in a, a growth phase of her life. Um, is there a possibility that she's going to be smaller than genetically she should have been? Absolutely. She probably will not be as big as genetically she should have been. But hopefully not by a whole lot, because like I said, at no point has she stopped growing, at no point has she stopped gaining weight. Um, every single visit, the vet says that her muscle condition, her overall body condition, her coat, Everything is indicating that she's absorbing the nutrients from her food. She just sits on me, and I, and I love it. If I complained about it, I'd be lying. Um, but, and you can see her, she used to be able, after five minutes, she would be starting to chew on the end of the bed. She'd be trying to climb off the bed. She'd be, you know, she's really getting the idea that if she hangs out and is good, you know, and she's, she's getting older. She's learning. She's learning patience. She's learning some, you know, a little self control of her behavior. It doesn't always have to be me telling her to do the right thing every two seconds. She's like, you know, policing herself, so to speak. She's, if she starts getting bored with one thing. Like I said, you can see like the spread of dog toys and stuff all over uh, that side of the bed. She just walks over and picks up something else. And uh, right now she's working on a bully stick. That's what she's chewing on. But, um, you know, so she is getting mature. She is, you know, she's, 
she's so smart. She's, you know, she's doing great. And I'm, I'm you know, fingers crossed as far as if, if your dog has to have this disease, at least hers, we're keeping the symptoms under control and she's not in pain. Uh, we had about a four day uh, course where she was nauseous and, and vomiting. And she was immediately went on medication for the nausea. Um, that cleared up again one, as soon as I had her eating what she's eating now. And as of yesterday's visit, she gained a pound in a week. Um, but she's cleaning the bowl. At every meal, she cleans the bowl. And the vet had said that, um, you know, because they asked me, did I think she was still hungry? And I said, you know, the fact that she licks the bowl clean every single meal makes me think she's that she might still want more. You know, she's eating at this point, like I said, about two pounds of food a day. He said, why don't we increase it to two and a half pounds um, of food a day? You know, not add any new ingredients yet because we just started a new multivitamin a couple days ago and we want to only, you know, change one thing every two weeks. Let's give it two weeks, make sure this multivitamin agrees with her. Uh, and then, you know, if I want to try to add an additional ingredient I, I want her diet to be as full as possible, you know, but, and I'd love to be able to make some homemade dog cookies. God, this out, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not cooking dog. Uh, I want to cook cookies for the dog. Um, so I used to do them for my, a dog I had a long time ago, but he didn't have any allergies. So it was easy. Uh, with her, I have to try to figure out like what my next step will be to be able to do that. You know, if wheat is something that's more likely to cause a reaction, you know, then my choices are probably either, you know, as a binding agent to make a dog cookie that you, you know, bake and make like homemade dog biscuits. Um, I would be looking at either almond flour or oatmeal probably as the, you know, sort of to make your, your dough that you then put some meat and some applesauce and, you know, the things that I know she can eat, but that I'd be able to present it to her as a snack, as a dog biscuit. Um, I know, like I said, my old dog loved homemade dog biscuits, uh, but his life was easy with him because I could cheat and just use like canned chili and he loved it. He did, but again, he had no allergies. So Percy is doing, uh, great. Um, She's overdue for haircut because I was sick. I was too sick last week with the asthma to take her. So she's starting to look like a sheep again. We have an appointment. Today's Wednesday. We have an appointment on Friday with, with Jordan who cuts her hair. Um, so she'll have that nice shaved face and feet and we'll get some of that. Her, her real, her adult hair is definitely coming in. It's that much coarser, well not coarser, thicker, denser, curly poodle hair. Um, you know, it's not the puffy, like chicken fuzz fluff that, that they have when they're babies. Who's a good girl? Why are you throwing things off the bed? Um, when I have her hang, wrong purse. Did you hear that scraping? That was her dragging her teeth against the wood of the frame of the bed. Wrong. Come here and there's a squeaky mouse. Why don't you play with that? After a while, if she's had enough and, you know, like we start seeing, she wants to chew on the bed, she wants to jump off the bed, those kind of things, um, then I'll, you know, bring her back to her room. She has her crate, she has her playpen, but I don't want her to feel like I'm ignoring her and we're not bonding and we're not spending enough time together and, and I miss her. I, you know, I'm used to hanging out with her all day. This is my buddy and she's a big goofball. Right, you're, you're a big goofball. And uh, so I just wanted to share with you guys, yes, we're dealing with some medical issues, <laughs> both of us. I have an asthma flare-up, and she's dealing with uh, stomach issues. But she's, uh, she's doing good, and, you know, obviously first things first, getting her healthy. And then, you know, maintaining all her, you know, not make, losing any ground as far as training. Still having that issue with wanting to lunge at cars when she's walked. I'm going to have to, once I can 
breathe better and can sit outside with her and stuff. I'm seriously considering setting up, like, a playpen outside, sitting in there with the dog. Lots of sunblock on me. Um, and basically just sitting in the front yard far enough away from the street that is not right in front of her face, but where we're just sitting out there. Unfortunately, I'm on a very low traffic road, and I think that's part of the problem. Cars don't drive by frequently at all. I'm in a very rural area. And so when one does drive by, it's, it's exciting and she wants to chase it. So I'm hoping if we like sit out there for an hour or two and just hang out in, you know, set up the temp, the playpen temporarily outside, hang out in there with some toys and shoes and just watch the cars go by, you know, and act like it's no big deal. And it's not, come here. Did you, did you throw it over the edge again? Because the silly human is, the silly human is getting tired of getting, get, get them getting tired of picking up off the floor. I'm supposed to be resting you. I'm supposed to be resting. I promised my doctor. Anyway, as you can see, my beautiful girl looks like a sheep a little bit, but that will, that will be remedied. Yes, that will be remedied in two days. We have a groomer's appointment. Thank you for watching. Um, I swear when I'm not full of uh, steroids and having an asthma attack, I, I actually, I don't have lunatic hair uh, most of the time. Occasionally, I do. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but my doctor's making me promise between nebulizer treatments and all the meds I'm on and getting not much sleep. He's like, Denise, rest, rest, rest. The meds can only do so much. You have to rest. Um, but I can't ignore my puppy girl. Even Our bedrooms are across the hall from each other which means a couple times a day let, making sure she comes in and spends time with me. And a couple times a day I go sit in her room. Uh, you know, just I have one of those like, just kind of like a cushion chair kind of thing on the floor in her room. And uh, I'll sit there where she can see me from her crate. Or if she's being good, I'll let her out of her crate and just shut the door to the room so she can, you know, that is kind of the equivalent of this, but in her room. I take a seat and she, you know, can walk in and out of her crate and get different toys and bring them over to me. So we're still, it's not the, you know, we're not playing tug of war or chase, you know, chasing the ball around, um, which ideally I would like to be doing more of, but at least, you know, like she's sitting there with her toys and it's like playing with a little kid. She hands me the toy, I hand the toy back. Maybe I throw it just a couple feet away across the room, you know, which is not giant exercise, but we'll do it for a while and it keeps, it keeps us engaged and it keeps her, you know, learning new words, like get the ball, get the toy. Like, you know, she's learning what these things mean. And, uh, again, it's just expanding her patience and her time for learning to just chill out with somebody. And that is important, especially, you know, for a dog that is hopefully going to be a service dog. She's got to learn that like, you know, yeah, sometimes you just got to basically sit still for an hour, you know, obviously at five months, she's not ready to do that, but you have to start that foundation of there's an expectation that sometimes I just need you to, you know, like, here's a little chew thing, lay there, chew your, chew your chewy or, you know, have your, your toy or whatever, but I basically need you to just lay here and be good. And she's definitely learning that. Oh, I'm getting puppy kisses. I'm getting the puppy kisses. Yes, I am. I love that girl. I love this dog. If you haven't picked up on that, I love this dog. Um, and she is the most affectionate, lovey little dog anyone could ever ask for. She is, she is wonderful. Um, but again, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, because you're like, wow, Denise looks like a lunatic. And I just ended here by some weird reason. Uh, you're not someone who watches my videos normally. Um, <coughs> yeah, the asthma is not a good thing. And it can take a while to get better once it gets this bad. But uh, please, subscribe, like, share. Um, if you <coughs> are a standard poodle enthusiast or just a dog lover in general. Uh, I've had all kinds of dogs most of my life. M most of them rescues. Uh, being that I was getting a service dog, I wanted the best candidate. So, you know, that is why I went with a standard poodle. Uh, unfortunately, mine turned out to have health problems. And taking care of her health comes first. If she 
like I've said before, if it stops her from being, it shouldn't stop her from being able to be a service dog. It might stop her from being able to do uh, one or two tasks if she's not large enough. Because for counterbalance and balance for mobility work, the dog really needs to be a certain percentage of the owner's height and weight. Um, her parents definitely were bigger, you know, than what I needed. They would have been, so that's why I chose that letter. But she is not looking like she's on track to be as big as her parents. So I don't know that she'll be able to do all the tasks I wanted her to do, but that's not a reason that she can't still do some of them. You saying hi? You saying hi? Um, and... I gotta be careful. She like touches, she touches the phone, she touches the computer. She does all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Um, she bumped her head on the lamp. Anyway, like, subscribe, uh, check out my playlist. Uh, I have a playlist that's just about her. Um, I have unboxings, I have gardening. I haven't done a lot of gardening videos lately. I did I did just buy my first uh, packs of, they're just starting to put the plants out by me because we still technically could have a frost for the next two weeks. Um, so nobody really wants to put out their uh, frost tender annuals yet because there's, you know, like our temperatures are at about 40 degrees at night, but there's still a chance that they could drop. It, it happens still where I live at this time of year. So during most, uh, most of my videos are, you know, my gardening videos are hydroponic, but once it's getting into spring and summer, some, I do some container gardening and stuff. Obviously, you know, it's going to be limited this year. I have a lot, I have a puppy to raise, so I'm going to be doing less gardening. I do unboxings of various products and things too. So I have a, you know, a playlist of that. So you don't have to dig through all the videos. If it's only one particular thing that you find interesting, that's, that's why there are playlists. So again, I do appreciate every single person who likes and subscribes I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel and I can't do it without you. So please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, um, comment, let me know if you, like I said, if you have a, and if you have a dog with IBD, let me know what things you found uh, they were able to tolerate easier than other things. I know certain things are more likely to be allergens than others. You'll be good over there. I think she's when she thinks I'm not looking, naughty things happen. Um, but again, I'm talking longer than I meant to. Thank you for watching, and have have a great day. And I'm telling you, best medicine in the world, walking around right behind me, better than anything a doctor can do.